ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Let's now move on to tutorial 4 which consists of again 5 problems that will be divided into 2 parts and uh, just a recap of our previous journey in which we have discussed problem based on particle in a box. Then we had seen problems like uh, to calculate the energy eigenvalue, energy eigenfunction etc. And these problems will again we will have such problems wherein you have to calculate uh, energy eigenvalue and energy eigenfunction of an Hamiltonian operator. So from uh, wave function formalism let us now move on to Brian Kett notation and uh, in that um, you will see that we have already seen actually the lin in linear vector space we have seen the how to calculate norm, how to calculate uh, the uh, some inequalities we have learnt like what is Schwarz inequality, triangle inequality and uh, now we will slowly move on to the Brian Kett notation and uh, let us get started with the problems. So the first problem is uh, you will see in after the result that this particular operator which is given to you a cap minus i a upon a s minus i a i is a special operator. After solving this you will come to know what I am talking about. So in the first problem you are uh, consider a ket space spanned by a eigen ket a i is given and of Hermitian operator A. So operator A is Hermitian we know what is a Hermitian operator A dagger is A is what is Hermitian operator. Remember this we have seen it before but uh, just to stress on I am writing here and we will be using this property if required. The next thing is that this Hermitian operator has eigenvalue a i. So, a i is the eigenvalue of this operator. So, you have to tell what is the significance of this given operator i going from 1 to n a minus a i upon a s minus a i. So, this is a operator given to you. And uh, in the problem this product notation is, so let me write this here where i is not equal to s, this is what the question means. So in the question you have seen i is equal to 1 to s then s plus 1 to n. Okay? So i is not equal to s, it is between 1 and n excluding the value of s that is what is given to you. So now uh, let us write this operator, you will operate this operator on a ket that is the Eigen ket A i given to you. Okay? So Eigen ket A i is operated on so, you have i is 1 to n, let me write this notation a minus a i upon a s minus a i operated on the operator a i. Okay? And here you must note that a i is the eigenvalue of this operator. So, let me write here when A is operated on the Eigen ket A i you get Eigen value A i. Okay? This is the Eigen operator 
or the Eigen vector sorry, this is the operator and this is the Eigen value. So, now when you operate this i equals 1 to n and i is not equal to s ok. So, a minus a i upon a s minus a i this is the operator. Now, I will operate a Eigen ket a j on this operator ok. So, when a i is operated on a you get a i and now when I operate a j on this what do I get is a j minus a i upon a s minus a i this is what you get when a j is operated on this ok. Now, you can see that from this can you make any conclusion? No. So, you have to see case by case. So, in case 1 ok there will be 2 cases. So, case 1 when j is equal to i ok, j is equal to s sorry, when j is equal to s. So, from this what do you infer ok and of course, this sum uh, the product is there, this is there ok and now when j is equal to i what do you obtain? When j is equal to i you get the right hand side becomes 1, the Eigen value becomes 1. So, Eigen value is 1 ok and when j is not equal to s. So, when j is not equal to s this is not equal, but i goes from 1 to n and if it picks a value when j becomes equal to i at some point the numerator becomes 0. So, at least one value is 0 ok, at least one eigenvalue is 0 ok. That means for j not equal to s the eigenvalue becomes 0. So, this operator this operator is simply written as this can be written as s ok. So, this is nothing but your projection operator ok. Remember the projection operator is when s are same. So, you can really write this when you operate this operator on j operator a minus a i a s minus a j this when operated on a j would give now in terms of this s operator when you write ok or the jth operator you will obtain ok. So, in terms when i s is equal to j, so let me write this as a s rather. So, when s is equal to j you will have just a j. So, when this is 1 you have when j is equal to s and when j is not equal to s this one will become 0. So, now let us go to the second problem. Now, in problem 2 this is an exercise for you to get hands on bra and ket notation. So, bra and ket notation you have to use to calculate that the trace of x and y is equal to trace of y into x. So, this is what we have to prove trace of trace of x times y is equal to trace of y times x. This is what we have to prove. So, in this we will use Brian-Kett notation. So, what is trace basically? It is sum of 
the diagonal elements. So, now this trace in bra and ket notation can be written as x, y, n. So, when you are multiplying I mean when you write this operators and do product and once you get the product you add up the diagonal element. So, you will add up this will be sum over n. So, when you sum up the nth element, so this is your x times y and you will sum up the diagonal elements. You will do this sum when n is equal to n. That means the bra and ket part of it is same. So, 1 1 2 2 3 3 n n and so on you will add the elements. So, now this is n and in this I add I put a projection operator a complete eigen ket m. So, let us assume that m this is y ok. This is you can write this as summation over m n and you can write this in the bra and ket notation like this. So, in the next step what do I do is I can actually flip this because this is a multiplication. So, it will not matter if I just flip these dummy indices. This is now the projection operator which is 1 ok. I can again write this as m, m trace of x and y will become now y times x m ok. So, in the previous you have seen that you have m, y and x. So, now this will be nothing but this trace I can rewrite again as trace of y times x ok. So, this is very simple exercise and it is expected that you uh, in order to get hands on bra and ket notation you must uh, do such simple exercises and even in coming problems we will see that using bra and ket notation it is very simple to solve the problems. Let us go to the next simple problem which is uh, is given to you that uh, an observable A has eigenstates 1 and 2. Observable A is given to you which has eigenstates 1 and 2 and the Hamiltonian operator. So, the eigenstates eigenstates of this operator are 1, 2 and the Hamiltonian operator is given by something like this is given to you. Now, this can be written as this Brian Kett notation can be rewritten as the matrix form. You can write this in the matrix form where omega is a constant and you have to derive the eigenstate and their eigenvalues ok. So, uh, here we have uh, omega. So, you have 1, 2. So, when you are writing a matrix this will be 1 1 component, this will be 2 2 component, 1 2 will be here 1 and 2 1 will be here 1 and 1 1 component and 2 2 component are not given. So, this is the way you will write. So, you can see in the previous uh, tutorial also we have seen such problems. So, going further to the next part of this problem where you have to calculate the eigenstate and the eigenvalue. You can see from this Hamiltonian operator and guess the eigenvalues. It is very simple. So, you remember 
the Eigen value equation. Okay. So, those who do not know how to calculate, let me demonstrate again. Okay. This is the Eigen value equation operator h on the Eigen vector on a vector psi 1 is equal to lambda is the Eigen value and psi 1 is the again the Eigen vector. So, you once you want to calculate once you calculate the Eigen values you can easily calculate the Eigen function. So, from this I can say that the Eigen values are omega and minus omega. It is very simple you have to just substitute for the Hamiltonian and Hamiltonian operator and calculate the corresponding Eigen values. Then what do we have is so if I call lambda 1 is omega 1 okay, then I will have operator h psi 1 is equal to lambda 1 is omega and lambda 2 is minus omega. So, h operator on psi 1 is omega psi 1. Then you know now what is operator h omega psi 1. Okay. Then you can simply know from here. So, when I do this I have a psi 1 here. Okay. Let me write psi 1 as some x 1 x 2. Okay. Then what do I get here is x 2 x 1 is equal to x 1 x 2. Okay. Simply then let me do it here only. So, x 1 is equal to x 2. This would imply that you have psi 1 is 1 by root 2 1 1. It is very simple to see that your psi 1 is nothing but 1 1. So, how do I get the values of x here? Again I will use the normalization condition psi 1 star psi is 1 then you find out the normalization factor and then you can click this. Now again this is for so psi 2 let me call psi 2 as x 2 some y 1 and y 2. Okay. So, for that same way when you substitute for psi 2 your lambda 2 is minus omega. So, you will have x 2 as minus x 1 and x 1 as minus x 2. So, if your x 1 is 1 then your x 2 is minus 1. So, your psi 2 will be 1 by root 2 1 minus 1. Okay. This is the way you can write. Now, again I have to rewrite this in terms of 1 and 2 operator uh, this Eigen vector I can write in terms of the Eigen states 1 and 2. How can I do that? This is again a simple step wherein you will write this. Let me demonstrate for 1. The second one you can easily calculate. Psi 1 we have got this I can rewrite it as 1 0 plus 0 1. Correct? So, now this is 1 plus 2. Same way psi 2 you will get something like this. So, now you have expressed the Eigen states in terms of the states 1 and 2. So, you have psi 1 as this, psi 2 as this and this correspond to eigenvalue omega, this corresponds to, 
corresponds to eigenvalue minus omega. It is a simple way of doing. So, if you have not done such examples wherein you have to calculate the energy eigenvalues or uh, eigenvectors, this exercise is a must for you. This is a simple example and that will help you to solve more difficult or different problems. So, you must try at least one such problems. In the next part of the tutorial, we will have two more problems. Let us meet in the second part of the tutorial.